and gentlemen, and it's an all-Egyptian match once again. Winner of this match will move to the semifinals and face the number two ranked Amr Shabana, also of Egypt. Warming up on the left, Mohammed Abbas. He defeated the PSA president, veteran Mark Schellner of England, in their first round match yesterday, 11-7, 11-4, 11-3, to advance to this quarterfinal. He came to the attention of the squash world for the first time when he made the final of the World Junior Championships in 1998. And the next year, he made the final of both the British Junior Open and the World University Squash Championships. Number 24 in the PSA computer this month, Mohammed is another of the strong Egyptian contingent, making their presence strongly felt on the PSA Tour for the past year. Our number eight seed this week, his best ranking thus far in his pro career was number 15. He's been in the top 100 for five years. His best results last year include one semifinal and three quarterfinals. Kareem Darwish's first round opponent was qualifier Alistair Walker, the young English rising star. Kareem won 11-8, 11-10, and 11-4. Kareem is our number three seed this week. He holds the number 11 spot on the PSA computer this month. He enjoys playing in North America, and his success record here is impressive. Last year, he made two finals, one of them the Apoamas Open in New York. He also had a semifinal finish in Dayton, Ohio, and added five quarterfinals to round out a very rewarding year on the Pro Tour. The 24-year-old from Cairo signaled his international squash potential in 2000 when he won the World Junior title. His transition onto the PSA Tour was relatively seamless, and he seems well-established now among squash's top 15. More about Kareem, by the way, on page 18 of our 2006 Pace Canadian Squash Classic Souvenir Magazine. The officials for this match, the referee will be Dave Howard, the marker, Wayne Smith. 2006, His fourth quarterfinal is an all-Egyptian battle with the world's number 11 seed, Karim Darwish, against the number 24, Mohamed Abbas. Darwish in the maroon top with the black shorts. He's 24, former world junior champion, British junior champion. Against the 25-year-old Abbas. Yes, Slat. Yes, Slat. Of all. The winner of this will move on to play Amir Shabana, also of Egypt, in the second semifinal. The other semifinal will feature Greg Power of Canada against, or Jonathan Power of Canada rather, against Greg Gauthier of France. Yeah, these guys have played each other a lot over the years. Kareem Darwish getting the better of Mohamed Abbas most of the time. Yes, <laughs> it's yes, quite, it's uh, quite humorous actually because he's never beaten Abbas has never beaten Darwish. They were teammates on the Egyptian junior team that lost the final in 98. But just to give you an idea, they, Abbas played Darwish in the 99 uh, British Junior Championship, lost. Then they met again in the 99 World University Games final. Abbas lost. In the All-African Final of 2003, Abbas lost. In fact, Abbas has made it to four PSA Finals, losing them all. And three of those losses have come to Darwish. Absolutely incredible. Darwish with an early one-love lead. It's even tougher for Abba, Abbas to get a, a victory over Darwish if that's the history between them. After a while it becomes mental. It's got to be said though, Darwish certainly oh. has a... Oh, Very nice. What a stretch and then a beautiful <laughs> touch drop shot. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that because when you look at Abbas, yeah. he's, oh. a, he's a tall man, probably s they, s they list him at 190 centimeters, I think it was, and so it's about 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, he's lanky. Is that an there was a, there was the advantage of being lanky, being able to stretch for that. But it, can it be also 
a detriment when you're trying to go after low balls? I think it depends on the court, and obviously, yeah, I think you're right. I think eventually, if you're if you're going high to low, high to low, then it's very difficult. You know, you've got to get that big frame. Maybe if your if your legs are stretched out, you don't have quite as much strength as uh, no. you would do if you're like slightly more squat. But I noticed actually I saw Abbas play in the first round yesterday, and uh, he's imp he's actually improved a lot. He hasn't had a great year by uh, by his standards and by Egyptian standards. He's uh, he really only had a couple of results. Uh, he beat John White actually uh, this last year, and that seems to be his only real great win of, of uh, 2005. The other times went pretty much to ranking really. Beating the guys that he should be, losing to the guys ranked above him. Darwish, by his standards, really, he hasn't had a great year either. He's, uh, he's ranked number 11. He's been as yes, high as number 5 yes, before. And he's, his uh, best result was against David Palmer, who reached uh, the Left World side. Championship final. And then the next tournament, he beat him in the second round uh, in Saudi Arabia. So um, he's a man in form. But certainly he's, uh, he's performed better in previous, uh, previous years. The referee for this match is Dave Howard. Stroke to Darwish. Stroke to Darwish, 4 1. Well, Vicky, travel all the way to Toronto, halfway around the world from Cairo, just to play your, your club mate. Yeah. Four Egyptians made it to the quarterfinal stage. See that fluid stroke of Darwish. Really cuts through the ball. Darwish reminds you a little bit of uh, Amir Shabana? Not really, actually. No, it's a different style of play. He's, uh, Darwish is probably more flowing. He's probably not quite as severe as uh, Shabana. Shabana's got such a quick racket really can put the neck, uh, neck uh, ball from anywhere. Darwish is, tends to be, his attacking shots tend to be sent, uh, really centered around his forehand kill from the mid-court. Not a lot of contact so far either, is it? No, it's actually quite a tight game. These guys, the Egyptian style of play is usually to boast it up and mix it up, counter drop shots, flicks. Nope. Yes, lad. Just as I say that. But these guys, they're keeping it tight to the wall. They're playing Take good a step basic forward. Sport, waiting for their opportunities. 4-2, Darwish leading. Ball one, right. But when professional players do that, it usually means they've got a lot of respect for their opponent. Stroke to uh, Abbas. Stroke to Abbas, and out to four. I actually trained these guys years back in the Egyptian junior team and it was in Germany. Yes, Let. Yes, Let. Two, four. I was training them for, there for a while with them. He's clear. And, it's, and uh, Abbas, was, he was a year older at that time, but I felt that Kareem Darwish had a lot of talent. And I've seen him over the years. Uh, actually thought he, I thought he might reach world number one by this stage, but uh, he seems to have sort of stopped short a little bit. Had his best year a couple of years back. Darvish with a 5-2 lead here in this opening game, fourth quarterfinal. Darwish from Giza. Abbas from Cairo. That's a, it's a remarkable photograph of the squash court <laughs> with the pyramids as a backdrop in Giza. Yeah, that was, uh, was a great era for squash. Hopefully it will come again because Egypt a great squash nation. Got a lot to be proud of with their history and also the current world champion. I find it interesting the way this the game has gone. And John is in power, of course, from Canada, ranked currently number one. We've had we had two Frenchmen here, four Egyptians. Uh, I think, though, and I remember as most people do, that the domination of Jahangir Khan, Janshir Khan, the Pakistanis haven't been at the top of their game, have they? 
Well, the curious Just thing about that is that three, squash in Pakistan is centered around families rather than like a national structure. And uh, it's not so much the same in Egypt. They've got a good national structure there. You've got kids from lots of different clubs, lots of different areas of the city, and they're, they're coming together Stroke to compete to in, the, in the national team. But in, in Pakistan, you're either, if you're from that family, then you keep it in that family. Mm. You don't go and tell some other kid, <laughs> you know? 5-4. Zabas is within one. That's a lovely mm. shot from Abbas there, really flicking his wrist, sending the ball cross court low. And just underneath the racket of Darwish to even it up at 5 all. Yeah, neither guy really taking control here. Yeah. I think the first game is very important for both of these guys here. Most Egyptians are confidence players. They, if they got a bit of a lead, they open up, and they've, they've all got great skills. They can really play great attacking skills and finish off rallies when they when they're confident and when they need to. Oh, that's a nice change. Kareem Darwish hadn't quite found his range yet. And I have a vast control in most of the rallies. <laughs> that beautiful boast and then a lovely backhand volley kill. He takes a two point lead, 7 5. A little surprising, maybe, to some. Yes, Lep. Yes, Lep. You do get players in the World Tour, Vic, that. They're not good travelers. They play great in their own country, or for example, Kareem was had a great time in, in Pakistan. He's won a lot of tournaments. He's won a lot of tournaments in Egypt. It doesn't seem to be performed too well no of, no in these kind of countries. Yeah. Although that being said, he has won the St. Louis Open before, which is uh, very impressive. And again, we, we mentioned that there are well, there, there are we tournaments which are graded. I mean, he's won 11 tournaments in his career, and he's just 24, but some of them... What is the grading system? I, I mean, I see it as stars. This Pace Canadian Classic is a five-star event. Well, there's the, until, once, once you go past the star system, the, you've got the Super Series events. All right. So even though you get most of the top players coming to an event like this, there are events that have perhaps more money and perhaps more ranking points. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. But this is for a 16 draw. Uh, this is the highest gr uh, grade that you can have. All the other Super, e super Series events, they're 32 draw. So logistically, they're a lot more difficult to organize. The winner will take home $15,000 out of a total prize of $60,000. The Pace Canadian Squash Classic. Stroke uh -oh. to Darwish. Stroke to Darwish. So Darwish with the stroke awarded takes a two point lead, 9 7. And that pass wants to it. talk with the referee. Well, I think that was, ball, that was a fair decision, I thought. And no, Kareem actually tried to play the ball and you waited, you had interference you from his opponent. You were there. But it's interesting. And the ball was there. Abbas really looked as though he had, had the rhythm. Play and Kareem Darwish really just slightly increased the pace. A little bit more accurate, and he's picked off four points in a row now. Nine seven. Yes, Lep. Yes, Lep. Nine, seven. Why? There isn't any interference. You should play the... You were close enough. If 
Come we'll play a lot. Oh, I think Abbas is just laying the groundwork for later on in the match, really. I know he's not going to change, but he's trying to educate the referee that when the ball's there to be hit, you've got to play it. You can't go fishing for sports, really. That's a nice shot. Created a lot of room. Picked the perfect shot and basically it'll get perfect. And so now Darwish, Karim Darwish, will serve for this opening game. 10-7 he leads. Well, if he wins this point, it'll be his sixth point in a row to take this first game. And a sign of a good player, really, when they're getting under pressure. Really pulling it back. Mm -hmm. uh, he trailed 7-5. And that's a tough boost from Mabas. Just to keep himself alive. Very unexpected. And so Mabas serving now, trailing by two. It's 10 8. Darwish leading. Down. Well, I think it's funny, these guys, both Egyptian, both speak Arabic, but on the squash court, they talk English to each other. Kareem Darwish's signature shot. Stroke to now, well, Abbas. The, <laughs> you were there. He's trying to make up. Well, he's trying, trying to be supposedly consistent, but that was a different situation. Kareem was actually genuinely clear there. No, no argument. Nine. Yes, Let. Yes, Let. Oh, it's a tough shot. Tight to the wall. Didn't quite clear it. Play the point again. Interesting to note here, actually, the Kareem Darwish has had quite a lot of success against Jonathan Power in the last few years, as opposed to Amar Shabana, who's ranked higher. Doesn't seem to quite have Jonathan Power's number. So I think if uh, Jonathan had a choice who was going to get through to the final from the bottom, I think that really rather it would be Shabana yeah. rather. Yeah. No. Oh yeah, have another go. And he no, gets it that time. Oh no, he doesn't. Abbas <laughs> could get. Three great shots by Darwish and Abbas has picked them all. Darwish needs the point to win the game. Abbas needs the point to force the tie break. Patient rally. Mm -hmm. Good players coming up tight to the wall. Tight. Oh, couldn't even dig it out. Nicely done by Mohamed Abbas. Great discipline from Abbas. Really not wanting to give his, his opponent any attacking angles. If he brings the ball out from the wall, then Kareem Darwish is definitely going to try and hit it in the front neck. So we're tied at 10. We'll go to a tie break at 11 10. Must win by two, remember? No let. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good you decision. were there. You should have played it. Graham Darwish actually got through to play the ball, and the ball was too tight to the wall. Yeah, he elected not to play it. No let. 11 10. Game ball. So Abbas leads 11 10. And we'll go to the tie break. 
Oh, this strange game here, going in flurries of points. Yes, let. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that decision. By the time the ball that, got uh, there, he was By the time over. Abbas was ready to hit it, I always had cleared the ball. 11-10. <laughs> A little bit too easy to give a stroke in that situation. Let's <laughs> we'll see, see what happens now. Abbas to serve. A point will give him the opening game. Slap. Yes, slap. <clears throat> this is not the type of, not the style of game I would have expected from these guys. They're playing very patient, tight to the wall. When they go short, they're going short, low and hard, tight to the wall again. And that's mm. a nice drop shot. He gets his chance again. Good get down. Oh. oh. Well, it wasn't a particularly great shot by Darwish. Abbas just poking it into the top of the tin. Can't afford to do that at crucial times like that. So tied at 11. Just win by two. Yes, Lep. Yes, Lep. It still seems as though Darwish is struggling to find his range, really. The ball's popping out a lot. to the floor and stayed there. So again, Abbas with a chance to win here. Nope. And that's more like it. That's more like the cream Darwish that we know. It's lethal from that. Look at the service box area in the forehand side. Very rarely do you pick it up when he's playing a shot from there. Tied at 12. Yes, let. Yeah, that's a good decision again. Ball was past him. It was interference, but uh, certainly couldn't have played a winning shot from there. So, 12 all. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, that that extra length that he has, a bass. No let. No let. 15, 12, game goal. So Darwish picks up the point. Minimal interference. You should have played the ball if you were there. Oh. First time I've heard that from one of the, the referees. If you're there, play the ball. And when you think about it. I mean, that's one of the criticisms of Jonathan Power, isn't it? Absolutely. You're there, yeah. play the yeah. ball. Yeah. So serving for the game is Karim Darwish. I like the way that Darwish carves around the ball with his racket, especially that last kill that won that last point. Really brings the racket strings around the ball. Get a lot of control, a lot of cut. Shot. Yes, let. Yes, let. Well, I'm just complaining that Darwish is just fishing for shots here, fishing for strokes. He might have a point, but certainly it's the situations that he's asking, and they're not outrageous situations. He might as well have a go. And here's a loose one. Nice angle. Ball sets up. Nice play by a bass here. Just 
sticking a leg and a racket back and popping mm. the ball up. Get down. Oh. No. Clips the top of the tin. So the opening game will go to Karim Darwish as he wins the tie break 4-1.